Our final speaker is Mike Stevenson. He's the Senior Manager, Strategic Markets at Nordan UK. And he's going to talk about sustainable building materials. Come and do it. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm conscious I'm between you and that door, so I'll keep this. I'll keep the time. Um, and Jamie, thank you for talking about the, the net zero public building standard. As you know, I've described that as the best kept secret for the last four years. So it's great that it's getting out there to, to, to the wider audience. So hopefully getting a presentation up. Let's hope so. Yeah. And technical people at the back are frantically. I did write it. I'm going to have to add lib. I can talk about Windows for ages, so don't worry about it. There we go. There we go. And no time on the clock either. So, sustainable building products. Right, my name is Mike Stevenson. I've got a very fancy title, but my job is supporting specifiers to specify good windows and doors. Absolutely love talking about it. My colleague calls me Ranty Mike because I want to talk about uh, specification of windows and carbon, low carbon windows and, and, and the like. So, um, Love, love what I do. So Nordan, Nordan's been around for 100 years nearly, a couple of years' time. Um, privately owned business, third generation, turnover 370, 380 million pounds. Timber window manufacturer. Um, it's great hearing about all this sexy technology, new technology, new electronics, apps and all this. We make windows and we've made windows for an awful long time. They're future-proof windows. They're very low, uh, low maintenance and we're involved in all sorts of different projects. So good examples here, there's social housing, built to rent, student accommodation, um, all sorts, low rise, high rise. I'll do a wee bit more on that little house in the bottom right hand corner uh, at the end. Um, we're also involved in schools, public buildings, colleges, etc. So our products have been used in many places um, and we're, very, we're one of the chosen window systems when it comes to um, public buildings, and that's because they last a long time, low maintenance, and uh, there's a, a good history to them. So, climate emergency, I'm sure there's been lots talked about this today. Climate emergency, a nature emergency, it was pointed out to me we shouldn't forget about the nature emergency. It's affecting all of us, whether we realise that or not. Um, and it affects us in different ways, but the built environment has a huge contribution to this. And when you consider that buildings in the construction sector are responsible for nearly 40% of global carbon, carbon emissions, and almost a third of that comes from the embodied carbon, which is the carbon that comes from the materials that you specify, the buildings that you build, you renovate, and you operate in. So that, that's an important factor. There's obviously, you can debate all day long about the global warming and where, what causes it, etc. But it's recognised now that we're generally the problem here. And it's because of what we consume and what we uh, create and what we buy and what we build with. And again, sorry for being back to basics, but in terms of looking, we, we hear quite a bit about whole life carbon. Passive House, for example, Passive House Trust talks a lot about whole life carbon. There's two types of carbon that we talk about, and I say, forgive me if you already know this, but operational carbon we talk about all day long because it's in the building regulations or you can go better. So you can go Passive House or AACB, uh, carbon light, whatever it may be. And operation, ca operational carbon is basically your thermal efficiency and your air tightness of that building. So as I say, it's well covered. It's in the building regs, it's out there. The other carbon is embodied carbon. And that's the carbon that comes from the extraction and processing and the materials that are used in the building process. So if it's windows, where does the timber come from or where does the plastic come from? What's it made from? The process it goes through, how much water it consumes. All of these different things are taken into account within the, the actual uh, embodied carbon. And just to put operational carbon in perspective, if you're looking at double glazing, it'll typically give you around about 1.2, certainly with a Nordan product, plastic windows, you could be looking at 1.3, 1.4. Triple glazing, 0.8, which is typically passive house, we can go down as low as 0.7. Air tightness, we, we're down as low as 0.1 in air tightness, passive house is around about an air tightness of 1. We can build an air tightness of 7 in domestic, or uh, I think it's 10 in uh, non-domestic. So, the products, the products are fit for purpose, but as I say, that's covered all day long within building regulations. This elephant that's in the room here follows me around everywhere. I talk a lot about it, and this is embodied carbon. And the reason that I call it the elephant in the room is that it's not legislated for anywhere in the UK. We don't have to measure it, we don't have to assess it, and we don't have to reduce it. That's a problem to me, especially when you look at the chart that's on here. 
I pinch this from Walk Thistle and Architects. I'm very much a person that doesn't put up market and produce stuff. It's generally it's got something behind behind it in terms of verified. See, I took this from Walk Thistle and Architects, uh, Andrew Walk. And this is uh, looking at the percentage of carbon down the, the left-hand axis and across the bottom a period of time. In the first 20 years, this is based on a block of apartments <coughs> built to building regulations. In the first 20 years, 68% or over two-thirds of the carbon that comes from that building is embodied carbon. Yet, at the moment, it is not measured, it's not legislated for, and it, there's no incentive to reduce it. And that, to me, that's why this is the elephant in the room, and we need to do something about it. Um, and specifiers, clients, you're the people that can do something about it. We can't wait for legislation. Legislation takes forever in this country. They've been debating a Part Z to the English building regs for the last three or four years. It did come from a private member's bill, so an, an MP that's got his uh, heart in the right place. Um, but it keeps getting thrown out and said we need more evidence. We need more evidence to why we need to measure embodied carbon. But how much more evidence do you need? You've got here the House of Commons Environment and Audit Committee, a report from 2022. If the UK continues to drag its feet on embodied carbon, it will not meet its net zero targets. How much more evidence does the government need? And I've got to say that's the, obviously the UK Parliament. The Scottish Government, we have the net zero public building standard is great. 50% of the, the targets, objectives in there around carbon, embodied carbon is measured, is mentioned in there, yet there is no requirement to measure it, certainly in domestic buildings. And from my experience, it's not measured that much in public buildings either, although the net zero public building standard exists. So we can measure embodied carbon, and that's where environmental product declarations come into being. Now, EPDs have been around for a long time. These acronyms and initials and stuff just get everywhere. But they've been around a long time. The beauty of an environmental product declaration is it actually allows you to do comparisons between different products. So you can take a, a Nordan timber window and compare that to somebody's aluminium window, and it will tell you the global warming potential of that product. And that's basically it's based on data collection. There's also a life cycle assessment, because one of the things that, again, concerns me is there's lots of sexy new things coming through, products, technology, and rightly so, innovation will be part of the solution. But these products have got to last. There's no point in putting a low-carbon product in if you're going to have to replace it every five minutes or five years, or it's high maintenance and it's got high carbon load on it because you've got to maintain it all the time. So it's getting that balance. And again, we look at our products been around a long time. Life cycle assessment of an Ordan aluminium clad timber window, and you'll see the samples upstairs, 60 years. You know, it's three times more than a, a general PVC window. Yet a PVC window is obviously significantly cheaper. But that whole life cost element, which I'll talk about in a minute, detailed background report, where do the materials come from? Where do you extract? How much water do you use? Where does the electricity come from? How has it been generated? An EPD takes account of all of these things. Importantly also, it's third party verified. It's not the marketing department that's produced this. It's not greenwash. There's too much of that out there. But it should be third party verified in EPD, so you should be able to trust the information that's in front of you. So I'd encourage you to use these and uh, actually specify the embodied carbon of different products. And what they allow you to do is something like what you have here. This is an analysis of, of carbon based on, th on actual EPDs. Um, so you'll see here, just I'm not going to go into detail, but the example here, it's a triple glaze window, three times more embodied carbon in a PVC window compared to an aluminium clad timber window. So if you extrapolate that across lots of different building materials, you can see how very simply you can actually reduce the impact of your buildings, whether it's new build, whether it's refurb, you can make a difference by choosing the right materials at the specification stage. So that's, that's important. And please, you can ask me for our EPDs. We've got a huge library of these, so I'm happy to share. So where are EPDs just now? Now, you can use generic EPD information. So you can go to the likes of the Bezria Guide, fascinating book, um, hundreds of pages of uh, different materials with embodied carbon and embodied energy in it. But it is generic, so it talks about a timber window. But there's lots of good windows, bad windows, in between windows. You then, your next stage from that is generally what you would get from me today is you ask for an EPD and you'll say, right, it's a tilt and turn window. There's the EPD for a, a triple glazed tilt and turn window and you'll get the global warming potential and body carbon from that. Great. 
That's one window. The next iteration of that has got to be looking at the project, so the whole supply of windows for that project. And I'm pleased to announce, here we go for the dinner, for the event. Nordan's actually launching this year uh, dynamic EPDs. And these dynamic EPDs, so you'll be able to get a quote, pound notes for your windows and doors for your project. That could be one window, it could be 5,000 windows, but you can get a quote, pound notes. Nothing new in that. We will also shortly be able to give a dynamic EPD, so you'll actually get a carbon quote for that project. So we'll tell you the embodied carbon of that, the, all the windows and doors for that project. You change the spec slightly, that will change slightly. So it's accurate and it's third party verified. So that we see this as a ground changer. And it gets right into the detail, sorry, conscious of time. So even into the adhesive in there, it's not missing anything out. You change the spec, it actually changes the, the carbon figure from it. Details of the, the whole document. The other important thing, as I've mentioned, whole life cost, really important. No point in buying something that's only going to last or specify something that's only going to last a short period of time. So think about the whole life cost. The product's going to last you 60 years, and it's maybe slightly more at the, part, at the front end. It's going to make a difference over the, the whole, whole project. If we keep doing the same things, we'll keep getting the same results. I think it was Albert Einstein that said, the first sign of insanity, keep doing the same thing and expect a different outcome. You guys need to do something different if you want a different outcome. If we're going to address fuel poverty, if we're going to address the climate emergency, we need to do something different. And headlines like that just reiterate it. We weren't supposed to be at this stage until the 2030s. 2023, one and a half degrees, we hit for a whole year. We need to change what we're doing. So how can you make a difference? Consider the materials, the embodied carbon, the, obviously, you're going to look at life cycle, you're going to look at uh, the operational carbon, but whole life cost as well. And to say this wee house, as I mentioned, this was a zero carbon house at COP26. Nordan's windows and doors were chosen for that. They were scrutinised to within an inch of their life, energy performance, thermal efficiency, low embodied carbon, and were they going to last? And they absolutely did. So we're very proud of that. So thank you. Thank you. That was exactly what I was going to say. If you've got to get gone, get gone. Um, because we are at quarter to four. So if you want to stay for Q&A, fabulous. Uh, but if you, want to, if you want to go, do so now. Because we're going to do 10 minutes of questions. Mike, I'm renovating my house right now, ripping the back out and putting six meters of glass in. And you are my new best friend. Because I knew none of that. And I would just go and buy windows because they're black. Now I know, yeah. and it's all because of this, so thank you. Um, may we speak? <laughs>